Hi, I'm Sharon. Hi, I'm Rich, better known as the Yarn Boy, and this is Jimmy Witty's Winky. Dinky Dinky Winky. <laughs> boop, boop, boop. Oh, oh my God. Shame on you. We're you back. Just relax. We're back, oh, yeah, finally. It's, it's been a while, hasn't it's it? It's been like a month. Gee, I really missed this. <laughs> I decided that we needed a break. We were going to take a break anyway because of Edinburgh, and so we didn't go to Edinburgh. No, we did not. If you would like to know why we didn't go to Edinburgh, you can watch last the last episode that we posted. <laughs> and I'm not going to get into it now, but we're fine. And we've had just a nice, relaxing couple of weeks. I slowed a little bit down on the dying. I haven't had an update in a couple weeks. But we'll talk about that later. And... Our little baby is doing so well. He is, I would say, 90% housebroken. He is very good in the house now. He only, I mean, maybe once a week he'll have an accident. And that's because I forget to walk him and he'll just go. But I, oh, the other night he got stuck upstairs. And he was scared, and he peed in the bathroom. He did? Yeah. I didn't know that. I think he was just scared, because he got stuck. <laughs> I have a gate so he doesn't get up there. He's afraid to go down the stairs, and I don't blame him. The stairs are dark. The hall is They're dark. They're dark and steep. So, you can't really see And I didn't know he was up well. there, and I heard some noise, and I went up. The gate had come down, and he had gotten up there. And, oh, there's another story we have about that, too. But anyway, that night he peed. How about that night last week? I was cooking. And you know, I'm cooking. I'm not paying any no. attention. Right? Don't bring that out. I know. That was a he horrible... He wants to go down. I'm going to bring okay. it out. Say goodbye to everybody. Bye. Go puppy, bye. puppy, puppy, go puppy, puppy. My dick to winky dinky. Woohoo. Ah. Okay. Ah, you males. <laughs> Obsessed with your well, winky Somebody posted. Dinkies. They were babysitting for the dog and then... The child was organ. I didn't know if it was male or female. Well, I said, well, turn, turn it over. over and you'll find out real quick. If it has a flat puppy belly, it's, a, it's female. a female. And if it has a little... You know what? ...thing hanging down, it's a boy. He's a boy, obviously. So, there was a dog in heat in our class today. We went to doggy school today. The one? Oh, yeah. I'll post a video that, of that later. That <laughs> big, giant... There was a standard poodle and she was in heat. How do you know that? Because I heard them talking. And I don't think the, the instructors were too happy that they brought her. She was at the, almost the very end of the heat. They weren't too happy that she brought. Which one was it? The black the, one or the... The brown the, one. The brown one. The chocolate one. But Jamie doesn't... He's not intact. We had him neutered, so he didn't care. Yeah, um, well, he we couldn't get near it anyway. <laughs> if he wanted I know. To. The thing was huge. So back to the, our story. So I'm cooking one night, and... Rich is, I don't know, what were you doing? You were hanging out, I don't know, downstairs. Yeah, I was down here doing something. When so was... he came upstairs and he said, Cher, where's the dog? Yeah, because he's usually down here with me all the time. And I didn't see him in a while. Yeah. And I'm like, well, isn't he with you? And Rich is like, no. So I said, well, he must be upstairs because that's what he does. Was the gate up when you went up to check? No. Okay. So Rich goes up to... To check. Or well, maybe it was. I'm not sure anyway, if it was in line. Yeah. Rich goes up to check, and I'm down here, you know, Jamie, because our house is fairly good size, and I'm like, Jamie, we're calling him. He comes back downstairs. He goes, he's not up there. I was like, wait a minute. Where would he be? He was nowhere. So we're thinking, did he get outside? Yeah, now, she would come back from running. But I knew he was in there after that. So I, I knew in my head that he couldn't possibly have gotten out because we hadn't gone in or out but it just we got I got really freaked out because Rich said he wasn't upstairs so you go outside and ca start calling his name I'm like yeah like that would do any good so I ran upstairs and we have we have three levels so we have four levels actually we have the family room where we are now we have our kitchen dining room we have the bedrooms and then we have an attic that's where I keep my yarn and that's where my studio is way in the attic I go up to the attic, all the way up to the attic, and I'm like, Jamie, he's standing there looking at me. <laughs> so he didn't come when I called him. He figured out oh, what do they want. Well, 
You should have gone... That attic is big. Rich didn't go all the way up to look for him. He must have been napping up there. <laughs> we were flipping... I was panicking. I, had, I was having a panic. Uh, he looks like he's got to go. He's wandering around. Yeah, you better put him in his crate. So while Rich puts him in his crate so he doesn't go while we're recording. So anyway, he was in the attic. Freaked me out. So we started him again in dog obedience school. We're in the media, uh, intermediate class now. And he's doing fantastic. We're working on... Leash walking is probably his least favorite because he's distracted by so many things around. And it doesn't matter... What kind of treats I have, he doesn't, you know, he kind of cares, but, and he's also really low to the ground, so he can't really see the treat, and I have to bend over to give it to him, so it's kind of a pain. I'm going to try a uh, back scratcher with some peanut butter on it to keep him next to me, so, but he's doing, he's doing really, really well, and we had a good class today, and that's, the well, Jamie update. In some things. So, why don't you talk about Thomas? Because everybody always asks about Thomas. Because we, when we record outside, you'll see Thomas because he likes to sit next to us. But when we're in the house, he doesn't. So, what's going on with Tom? He's alive. <laughs> He's doing great. He's I mean, fa Jamie fabulous. Jamie coexists. You know, he would be fine with Jamie if Jamie didn't start leaping back and forth wanting to jump on him. Thomas is so tolerant of Jamie. Thomas is our 15-pound neutered tomcat that we found in our backyard. And Jamie adores him and wants to play with him. And Thomas is old, and he's like, um, no, I'm not going to play with this little baby. Sorry. He noses, though. I th Thomas to is so good with him. He doesn't beat him up. He doesn't scratch him or anything. I don't know why, because Jamie will practically jump on his head. <laughs> And chases him all To get everywhere. him to play. The other day, he, Thomas kind of swatted at him, and Jamie was like, burr, burr, you know. And I'm like, well, you deserve it. You're right up in his grill, you know. So. We took him over to our daughter's apartment. She has a cat. And as soon as the cat saw him, she blew up into this um, giant Jamie. ball of fur. <laughs> and he wouldn't go near her. No. And she growled at him. No, she was, she was not happy. She, she, she didn't was want not him there it. at all. Mm -mm -mm. No, 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 no. So he does know cats can. Yeah. Kill. But but Thomas is so tolerant that he's such a good boy. So anyway, for those of you who have asked me about Thomas, he's doing fantastic. So how are we? How are you? Oh, I don't know. Ask me Monday. I had to go for a nuclear stress yeah, test. Yeah, well, that's routine. Monday and Tuesday. Yeah. We've been going to a lot of doctor's appointments. <laughs> when you get old, that's like what happens. What happens. <laughs> and our son had a bunch of silly, you know, ear things, and we had it. So we've been running to doctors, which is another reason why we haven't recorded. It's been a little crazy. Nothing bad, just weird stuff. So I need a root canal. I'm not happy about it. And I wouldn't be in it. Just to make a long story short, I'm a little, I'm, I've become allergic to injections, to the preservative that they put in injections. And I haven't had Novocaine in a really long time, and I'm afraid to get it. So I have to make arrangements mm. with my allergist to send them Novocaine. It's like a whole process. And I'm like, oh my God. It's... Anyway, you don't want to hear about that. So, we didn't go to Edinburgh. No. We were sad, but I was happy to stay home with our little babies. That would have been hard. I think it would have been hard when on he's, him. When he's older, yeah. When he's older, it would be better. Since we got him, he's we are retired, so he's with us constantly. He's all day long, constantly in sight of one of us. And I think if we would have just disappeared for ten days, he would have been. He would have been. Yeah. I mean, he loves our kids. Oh my God, he loves Troy and M. That he adores them, and Troy would have done a very lovely job taking care of him. Troy lives with us. Um. But still, yeah. walking every hour, the kid goes to school. He wouldn't be able to yeah. do, you know, it would have been hard. Yeah. So, anyway. He, he would have taken a backward step without Jamie breaking. gets a lot, yeah. he, has, he has a lot of attention from, the, even though Jamie's independent. I mean, he, he's not, like my old dog, Lily, was constantly underfoot. She was, she was like my glue. 
by my side. She would never leave. Oh, we could never let him outside. He'd run away in a minute. Whereas she would, she would just stay by me. This we went one? to take her for a walk one day. We oh got my in a car. God. It was you, me, and This is a Troy. bad story. We got in a car to take her for a walk, and we get to the rail trail. We park, and we look in the back, and I said, what the hell is Lily? And Troy sitting back then. He didn't even know she was missing. And what do you, you know, what? Was he with us? No, he wasn't. Troy was not with us. Was not with us? That was just you and me. Oh, okay. We forgot to put her in the car. Yes. And we pull back in the driveway. And, and she's, she's just, just, she's just standing, standing here, yeah. like, waiting. <laughs> Yeah. She would never leave. She wouldn't go. Yeah, no. No, she was. She she was by my side. This one. That's why we got so nervous. Because if he ever got out the door, he's gone. Bye. See ya. Cause Lily, we would open the door, let her run out, and go to take care of business, yeah. and she'd come right back, be sitting at the door yeah. waiting. Not him. Oh. oh no, he's he's distractible. He's oh, he has it. He has no no. Anything that would distract him. He's he, he has the he, attention span of a, oh of a my gosh. If, if my neighbors are out when I take him out to pee, I have to go the other way because he just he sees them and flips out. He he's terrible. All right, well, let's get the show on the road. We got a lot. To I do. know we have a lot to talk do about. Do you give away? <laughs> okay. Uh, so I have a. I'm going to start doing giveaways again. So this is a package. From, from from Knit Crate. If you would like a Knit Crate subscription, you can get 20% off by clicking my affiliate link down below. I get a little bit of money from that and it helps pay for shipping of prizes. So I greatly appreciate that. And you also get 20% off. So um, yeah, this is this month. Ooh, this is so bright. I have a, I have a shirt that color. It's beautiful. Salmon, right? Is that what it is? Ooh. It's Audine Wool's Psy DK, 85% merino, 15% cashmere. It's gorgeous. Oh, that's soft. DK weight. Wow, that's nice and smooth. 302 yards for a total of over 600 yards. Wow. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, the colorway is Ladybug. And I would say that that is definitely a ladybug color. It's beautiful. So in order to win this, leave a comment down below under this YouTube channel in the comments. And tell me a knitting disaster that you've had. I had a near knitting disaster today, which I will talk about in a minute. Tell me about a knitting disaster. A knitting disaster. Speaking I of, always have knitting Speaking disasters. of knitting disasters... You want to show us your project? Oh. oh, this is gingerbread porter, by the way. Very good beer from my little beer machine. Your little beer machine. Oh, the beer machine people emailed. Uh oh. You're getting your next shipment. When? I don't know. I better. They shipped. They shipped? Yeah. Oh shit! I wonder what they shipped. You should have picked. <laughs> oh. Uh oh. So this is Richie's shawl. It is the. Hey, I got rid of the gray, and now I am. Started on the blue. Turn it around. Oh. Show the right side. This right is side, left side, back loosely side. Loosely based on the Wellington work sock pattern. I will link to it in the show notes. And I kind of hacked it a little bit for them. Um, I screwed up. Well, yeah, because you left a lot of loose stuff and I just started knitting. And oh, yeah, he joined it, it in the round yeah. by accident. <laughs> but um, he added another color. Blue. A light, blue. pale blue-gray. No, that's probably going to need more yarn than what I got in the blue. No. Nope. You sure? Yep. You'll be fine. Once you... I have... And we're going to put some white in there and some more gray. I'd rather put wooden black over I mean that. red. We're going to put red and gray. Right? Or right. we could put black. I'd rather have black. All right. So I'll... He'll tell me what colors and we will... Or maybe chartreuse. Chartreuse is... Chartreuse works. So, yeah, so you're doing well. Yes, I've been knitting the last few I'm days. I'm so proud of him. That's awesome. I've been doing a lot of knitting. You always do a lot of knitting. I am wearing... Yeah, it's very pretty. A finished object. Actually, it's beautiful. It fits you like a glove. Oh, my God, you guys. I'm in love with this sweater. I may never take it off. I actually want, I, I really want, like, 
a few more of these and I actually have yarn to make three more and I will in the next few years you know like maybe I'll do one a year so this is the so faded pattern by Andrea Maori I'm gonna kind of stand up so you can see look how cute this is you guys I'm in love with it I love it looks pretty good over your butt too <laughs> thank you dear so this is my hand dyed yarn in the posh base. I love the way it goes in the, the, the like a, like blue and greens. I know. Greens, I know. love it so much. And there's a story behind this sweater. So um, th this is my posh base, which is 80% superwash merino, 10% cashmere, 10% nylon. It's my MCN base, and it's probably my favorite base to wear and to knit that I dye. And I I just love this base it's the coat feel how soft oh my gosh yeah, it's no, the it coziest it's very soft. Oh, i love it well this is rich is knitting his shawl out of the same base but it's dk weight it feels thicker it is thicker oh this is fingering oh fingering thickering but a fingering weight sweater is just magical it's fabulous well it's probably too thin for a decent shawl you think no no this oh, i have okay. a shawl in this I have several shawls yeah. in this. I love this base. So anyway, I started this two years ago with the color at the very top, which is a Game of Thrones reference. It is Direwolf. I had a Game of Thrones series that I can bring back, and I probably should because Game of Thrones is starting mm. this Sunday. <laughs> so maybe I'll dye some Game of Thrones colors this weekend. And I'll tweak them a little bit. But anyway, this top one is Direwolf. And I stalled out on it. Totally stalled out on it. I had like a neutrally fade going. And I'm like, eh, I don't know. Um, put it away for two years. <laughs> Last year, I pulled it out again. And I decided that these two colors, the, this or these three colors, this pale blue, this green, and this pink would look nice with this direwolf color. So I, I pulled these colors and put them aside in a bag and left it for another year. <laughs> so then when we were going to Edinburgh, I'm like, well, I've got this started. I might as well get to the body. So when I'm on the plane, I just have something to knit in the round. Just easy knitting in the round. So I picked it up again and I just, oh my gosh, it was so potato chippy. I love that. I've seen so many of these with brighter colors and I wanted brighter colors. So that's why I added these. And I just love them. This is, I'll put the colors in the show notes. Um, I can't remember exactly what they were. This was a Valentine's Day reference. This. This was winter holiday. The bottom one was best friends. And yeah. So I just love this. If you guys are interested in me putting together a fade for you, let me know. Pattern never included, but um, I can dye these again. These are easy to dye. This light blue, was I was obsessed with knitting the light blue because look at all the colors in that. Mm, it's purple, very subtle. Yeah. It's very subtle, but the light blue, it's got purple, purple and, and green and, and browns and It's blue, so black, beautiful. Or dark blues. I just and then this this purple and pink and green. Oh my god. Obsessed. I loved knitting this. <laughs> so, yeah, so I finished it last week and Today, I was weaving in the ends, and I accidentally cut a hole in the sweater. This sweater? Mm-hmm. Oh. With my scissor. Hmm. That must suck. Did you patch it? Or you still got the hole? I patched it. Ooh, Luckily, the hole was in, it's in the back on the garter stitch. I couldn't even, I could find it if I looked for it, but I, I did some. Oh, there it is. No, there's no hole. <laughs> I made sure. So I did, I repaired it. And it looks fine. 
But that was my knitting disaster for today. Have you ever had a knitting attack? Like the Knit More Girls when knitting attacks? Yeah, that was mine today. Because what had happened was when I was sewing in ends, I kind of sewed this underarm kind of together on the right side and I cut it and I cut yarn. It was bad. I was, I, tears, oh, no. almost tears. Because hmm. I had a big hole. Is that why you were in a bad mood when I got home? I was kind of, yeah. Oh. I actually was kind of in a bad you mood. You were in a bad mood. I was. That's what, right after it happened. <laughs> I was actually really, I was, didn't cry, but I was ready to. I was not happy. So this is my, I love it so very much. I just love it. If you guys want me to dye this same fade for you, I can, or other, another color for you. Um... I have a lot of yarn in my shop right now that would make beautiful fades for this. And I have to tell you, the sizing, oh my, this fits so well. It does, it fits perfect. I knit the 38, and that's, um, my bust size right now is like a 37. So it actually, I think, stretched out a little, so it's more like a 40. Because super wash yarn just stretches out. But it's stretched out perfect. It fits perfect. You even told me, oh, you look so thin in that sweater. I was like, thank you so much. <laughs> That'll never come off. I've been trying to lose weight. and I, I don't know how you don't. You don't eat shit. I you eat run every day. So healthy. I've been running literally. You gave up drinking completely. I don't drink. I've been running every day for a month. I have lost nothing. <laughs> You don't need it. I think it's when you're over 60, your metabolism just. Oh, I'm over 60 and my metabolism. Well, I know why I don't lose weight. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> At my age, I really don't if care. How quit, many more years do I have left? If I don't you quit care. drinking, you probably would lose a lot of weight. But oh, you yeah, don't but care. Why? So, what? I don't care. And I don't need to lose a lot of weight. Okay. So, oh, so just let me show you what I've been working on then. Yeah, show that. So, I cast on a new project, like you do when, I, when you finish. So, I think what, this year is definitely the year of the garment for me. I kind of knit some, I knit some garments last year, but I wasn't like totally thrown into it. This year, it's garments all the way. I have a couple of shawls planned, but they're really going to be secondary. What are you looking at? Is the sound on? Yeah. Okay. I checked. Okay. Better be. So if it's not. If it's not, you're doing this alone. Yeah, we'll do it alone. <laughs> okay. So um, I immediately cast on another garment. And this, it's, I, I just have one night's of knitting. This is one night. Um, this is Floof by Skein Deer. It is a mohair um, pattern. Hence the name Floof. And this is the back neck. Since we didn't spend any money going away to Edinburgh, I decided to order some things online that I was planning on buying at the festival. Well, you got some. So I have. Nelly Nance Bush. Yeah, so I'm going to talk about that. So this is kind of going to be mixed up with my stash enhan enhancement for the week. So I'm going to show you my. Non Edinburgh Hall, not an Edinburgh Hall, but I do have a haul over here. So I ordered some yarn online, and this is from JC Rennie Company. And I was planning on going there and picking out the colors in person for this floof sweater. This is what Skein Deer used. She used JC Rennie yarn, and this is a fingering weight. Um, four ply yarn, not a sock yarn, this is a sweater yarn. Mostly used for color work, but Ellie held some mohair together, so I dyed mohair to go with it. This is my tiny eggs color. So these two colors are pretty different. Hmm, very different. So I kind of wanted to lighten this up a little bit. This is kind of a strong color. So that's why I kind of did a really light mohair. So when you mix it together, when you hold them together, um, you get a very nice marl, and you get a nice optical mix. Isn't that a nice color mm. you get together? Yeah. You like it? Yeah. So you didn't lighten this. That's, you left it? 
this is the, this is just held together with this mohair oh. and that's what happens you get a lighter color isn't that pretty yeah so you're knitting you got two lines of thread going I on, have huh? two strands yeah. I have a hard time yarn. with one I can imagine trying listen to do two. this is not <laughs> an easy sweater, first of all it? first of all the mohair has not been bothering my allergies so that's good news because or maybe because it's not all mohair well, no, I was knitting a mohair held with a, another yarn right around Christmas time, mm. um, the shawl by Helen Stewart, and I started to sneeze. I don't think it was the mohair doing it, honestly. But anyway, so, yeah, I have my ball of yarn and my mohair held together. It's a pain in the ass. I'm going to be honest. I hate holding two yarns together, but it's been okay. The mohair, this yarn is sticky. This JC Running yarn is sticky. It's stickier than the other yarn that I was using, um, the Superwash Merino. Um, it doesn't stick to the mohair as much. So it's not as bad. It really kind of sticks together nicely. So what you have to watch out for is um, you want to make sure you get both strands on your needle when you knit. Sometimes mm. it's easy to miss one. I can imagine. So, oh, it's just, well, what if you kind of like twirled them before you brought it over to like give them a little... Oh, know. like if you twisted them yeah. together? It would well, be easier? No. No. Okay. And I'll tell you what, uh, that's a really, you're, you're thinking very much outside the box. Like, I, like my, say on my spinning wheel. So what if I put these two on my spinning wheel and twisted them together? I probably could do that, but I'm afraid of having a yarn disaster because... Chelsea from Legacy Fiber Arts is knitting a mohair sweater. She's, she's knitting the that other one, the raglan that everybody's knitting. And she wound her yarns together, exactly like you said. Uh -oh. So anyway, Chelsea from Legacy Fiber Arts did that. She wound her yarns together and she got horrible yarn tangly mess. Oh. Okay. That's so nice. I'm afraid of doing that. I mean, yeah, I don't blame you. Like, you know what? It's interesting. I'd never even thought about it till I just talked about it. This yarn is so nice and sticky. It really holds together with the mohair all on its own. But you kind of have to watch because last night I was knitting and I had a big strand of mohair like just hanging out in the back. I'm like, crap. And I had to undo. Luckily, it was on the same row and I was able to fix it. However, so far the floof is, I'm, I love knitting it. It's knit at an Aran weight gauge, so hopefully it'll go quickly, faster than this. This took me, I was like to here when I started it again. It took me three weeks, which isn't bad for a fingering weight full size adult sweater. Mm. But that's all I worked on. I mean, I didn't touch anything else. Um... This is an Aran weight gauge. So this, this gauge is like 26 stitches to the inch. This is only 18 stitches to the inch. 19 stitches to 19. And it should knit up much quicker. And this pattern is a brand new construction that I've never knit before. Um, it's the contiguous method where you knit the sleeves at the same time you knit the yoke, I think. I'll let you know when I get farther into it. So that's it. That's basically all I've been working on. I haven't done anything else. I have a couple things I need to, I have to finish those mittens. I want to start mittens for you. Okay. Even though you don't and need the summer's them. Summer's coming. I, can I know, use summer's them. coming. <laughs> you will have them by I next can winter. I'll paddle in the pool with them. I promise you will have them. Okay, so floof. Um, all right, so let me show you some of the yarn that I purchased from overseas. Oh, this JC Running yarn. I bought, I think, six skeins of it. They only charged me $8 to ship it. Isn't that crazy? What would have had they charge? I what? know. I don't know a what lot. they charged. 15? Yeah. $8 from, uh, I, from, where's this from? Scotland. $8. It's cheaper for me to order stuff than to go to the Yeah, fest. I mean, I'm always Ireland. Although I, I put some stuff from Lobby and Me in my cart. Um, from France, 
because I want to try her new non-superwash. It was going to cost 50 bucks to ship it, and I'm like, nope, I'm not buying it. <laughs> I'll see them at some point. I'm not going to buy it. Okay. From Isolde. Where'd that come from? It just came today. Oh. This came from Isolde Teague's booth. Booth. Store. From what country? From Scotland. From Scotland. I was going to purchase this um, right at the festival, but I didn't get to go. Didn't think it came from Libya. So this is Rama 3-ply Strickagarn yarn. And I am going to make... This is going to be next on my needles. I am going to make a Koiva by Caitlin Hunter. I'll put it down below. Um, and I'll, see, I'll pop a picture in. I was inspired by... Oh my gosh. I, on Instagram, I was inspired by an Instagrammer who test knits a lot. I can't think of her name right now. I'll put it down below. Um, she knit a gorgeous golden black one. And I just said, that's what I want, golden black. So it's going to be beautiful, and I'm very excited about it. Okay. Oh, and Isolde, that big giant thing of yarn, mm. $8 to ship it from Scotland. Jesus. Yes. Holy cow, so much from Ireland for a I don't know. Hat. Okay, so the one other thing that I had shipped to me, I wanted to buy. Um, this is Jameson and Smith's 100%. You were, were going to buy all the stuff in Scotland? I was. Probably in Where more. Where were you going to fit it? In my half a suitcase. Huh? And my half a suitcase. Anyway. So this is Shetland Supreme Jumper Weight Yarn. This is for a hap. I want to make the quill hap, which is a giant square shawl. This is the one shawl I have planned for this year. Um, so I want to make it in this gorgeous natural gray color. And I was only going to do a solid, and then I, I saw one on... Um, Ravelry, where she used a cream and a darker, like, tan um, for the border. So I may do that because it's huge. Just like a blanket, basically. Um, a lot of yarn for one shawl, huh? This came from the USA, though. Oh, okay. Um, they probably charged you $14. This I year. think this was free shipping. <laughs> oh, this. okay. Yeah. And it was a really good price. It wasn't from the Woolly Thistle. I can't remember where I got it. I will put a link to the shop where I got this. And I'm, yeah, it's shade 2003. It's their gray. Shayla, I think it's called. Um, and I love it. It's beautiful. Um, and the only other thing that I'm getting is some yarn from John Arbin. I can't remember the name of it exactly, but I want to knit the Bohus sweater in the latest um, issue of Lina Magazine. And I wanted to buy the yarn in Edinburgh, pick it out myself. I want to see the colors in person. I couldn't do that. No, because we didn't go. And... Um, you can't get it in the U.S., so my very kind and lovely friend, um, Katrina, bought me the yarn, and she and her husband are coming to Rhinebeck, and I will get the yarn then. She sent me a picture of it, and I will pop that picture in here, and it, it is the exact same colors that are shown in the sample in the magazine, even though the magazine looks more green, I think the colors are more like a tan, but... Anyway. Okay. Is that it? Yeah, almost. I have yarn that I dyed this week. Oh. Is that what was in that bag I got rid of? <laughs> okay, so shop <coughs> news. I haven't had an update in a couple of weeks. I took a couple of weeks off. Oh, you giving your socks away? No. Those are nice socks. Not giving them away. I'm oh. going to show them to you in, oh. in, a, in a second. Okay, so... um. I may or may not be having a sale in the next month or so. 
If you want to know about the sale and maybe get a little bit of an extra discount on the sale, sign up for my newsletter. I will put a link in the show notes. And you can also go to my website and there'll be a pop-up. You can sign up there or at the very bottom you can sign up for my newsletter and you can get the latest news on the shop. I'm going to start doing my regular shop updates Wednesdays at 8 p.m. So, kind of. And I have a bag. Look at this adorable bag. Donna picked out the fabric. Yeah, what do you do? Poo bag. A poo bag. Oh. Oh my gosh. Cool. Poo has a special place in my heart. I loved Pooh when I was a kid, and our daughter was really into Winnie the Pooh as well when she was a baby. I just have such lovely memories, and I dyed the yarn Everybody's to match. What do you there, think yeah, of the yarn? Very nice. It has yeah. very subtle speckling. I mean, I don't know if you guys can see that. The yarn, it's absolutely beautiful. The name of the kit is going to be Nothing is Impossible based on a quote from Winnie the Pooh, something like, nothing is impossible because I do nothing all day. <laughs> Sounds like me. <laughs> Sounds like Winnie the Pooh. Yes, it does sound like you. But I, I just love this, and I may steal one if there's any left. But we have lots, so that's the bag and the yarn. And I think I'm going to be doing some Disney-themed yarn. All of this yarn here is Disney-themed except for one. Um, this this colorway is actually a little bit like the color in my sweater, yeah. but it doesn't really have green. It has more gold. So I was trying to think of the colors of the Winnie the Pooh characters. And I'm calling this Friends Forever because it's got Eeyore's color and Piglet's color and Pooh's color. little orange in there maybe for Tigger. I just love this. Friends forever. And this was, I don't know if I'll dye this again. This was labor intensive. So if you want some, grab it. I love it. Um, this one. A hundred acre wood. Because that's where they live. And I just love these teals and browns and greens together. So that's 100 acre wood. And also on the woods theme, I'm obsessed with this color. I may have to make a so faded <laughs> around this color because I think it's really cool. This is Enchanted Forest. I just love the, the pops of speckles in there. And one more color. So, I had, um, I had a sample knit done, and um, Terry, the Teal Raven, she has a podcast, the Teal Raven podcast, knit these socks for me. I adore them. Did I only bring one? No, I have two. Yes, there's two. I'm not sure so, this is foot. Helen Stewart's... Um, Oh, yeah. Sock Society. Online. Yes, the Sock Society pattern. And this is Shell Cottage. And Terry knit these for me. And they're absolutely gorgeous and they fit perfect. These are the size medium in my trendy base, which mm -hmm. is a uh, 7525 uh, four ply superwash merino. And I have some of that in the shop in that base. So this is Shifting Sands, 
I re I'm going to restock Shifting Sands. And I just love how they came out in this color. I just love it. This would be, and they just fit beautiful. But if you don't want to do such a lacy pattern, you can knit these. This is a nice man color, guy color. Very neutral. I love these neutral colors. Make a nice sweater. Would make a nice so faded without the fade. <laughs> so, anyway. What's nice about the sweater is very versatile. Like you don't have to do the garter stitch on the on the shoulders. You could just do it plain. You could do it without a fade. I'm very impressed with the fit of the sweater. Because raglans don't fit me so great. But the way she wrote this, it fits very nicely. Nice color. I love that. Yeah. That came out really good. So I also have some of the um, the bag colors. I'll have them as a, you could buy them. This is a DK. So I have one and a DK if you want it. Did you get yourself a Winnie the Pooh bag or no? I might. If they don't all sell out, I might get a Winnie the Pooh bag. We'll see. Um, so that's it. By the time you see this, the update should be live. So go to the shop. All these will be in the shop. Um, at some point I will be having a sale, but not for a while. A couple weeks. Um, if you want to stay informed about that, like I said, sign up for the newsletter. I don't, I send out maybe once a week tops, maybe once every couple. I hate writing. <laughs> That's why I, I podcast. I hate writing anything. So newsletters for me are rough. <laughs> so, anywho, that's why I like record. I like recording much better than writing blo a blog. Or you'll never catch me doing that. Forget it, because I hate to write. So, all right. Anything else we have? No. No, I didn't have. I don't have a giveaway to draw this week because I didn't do one before I left, which is good. Um, enter the giveaway down below. Tell me your knitting disaster. attack, knitting disaster. Like I cut a hole in my sweater. Oh my God. Tears. Um. <laughs> I guess if you would have dented the car, I would have been more with something crying over. It's not like I haven't done that before. <laughs> mm. <laughs> On that note, we will leave you guys. So ha we're back. We'll be back every week. From now on for a while until we decide to take another little break. Um, I might go to the Bahamas by myself. Yeah, maybe. But she'll be here. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm not into traveling right now. I'm, I, we were thinking about going f for a road trip. I looked into maybe going up to Maine, bringing the dog. If I go anywhere, I want to bring the dog. Um, but I'm not into it. I don't know. I just want to be home right now. I don't know. Well, there's a lot to do. I got so much work to do. It's ridiculous. And the weather's getting really nice. I just have a nice routine. I'm a home. I've decided I'm kind of a homebody, and there's nothing wrong with that. No. I love being home. I love being retired and just being home and working from home and doing my thing and puttering around and organizing. I'm constantly now organizing. Constantly. So I love it. That's good. Does she have something to say? You didn't take me to Scotland. You oh. lied. <laughs> well, we, we didn't go to Scotland, so it's kind of hard to take you if we didn't go. Huh. Oh, she's mad. I wanted to go and meet all my knitting friends. And Aww. I didn't go. Poor. Oh, happy belated birthday to my good friend. Who's your good friend? Christy Glass. You it's don't even know her. <laughs> How do you know? Happy belated birthday, Christy. She probably doesn't even watch this podcast. Someone will tell her. You can take your Scottish Tam off now. We're not going probably for a while. Do you have a song for Christy? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> I just woke up. A birthday song? <laughs> Want some beer? Oh. Yeah, poor, oh gosh. Poor, poor, we're very sorry. We couldn't yes. take you. Your dog killed my other cousin. No. Oh, you killed Lego Lamb. Oh, Lego Lamb is dead. No, I have no cousins. Oh. They're all dead from that dog. <laughs> well, you better be careful. Yeah. You'll be next. Ah. Hide, uh, hide in a bar where you belong. Okay. Okay, with that thumbnail. We are going to end the show. 
Oh, I thought you said we're going to Edinburgh. We're going no, to go we are, right now. No. We, we will at some point. We will, but not for a while. So, all right. Have a great week. Knit something beautiful. And cheers. And cheers. cheers. Well, I'm not sitting here, but I use, this will be your seat. Can you see you? Yes. I am sure. <laughs> I it, oh, you're such a puppy. <gasps> you need a bath. You need a bath. Okay. I'm gonna get a little refill on my beer. Get a refill. Go ahead. I can cut it out. The magic of editing. Can we do a thumbnail? What? Can we do a thumbnail? Oh, we done enough damage already. <laughs> People are probably sleeping in the chairs. I want to hold up all my yarn I bought. Alrighty, yes. Yeah, Smile! Awesome. Okay. For those of you who don't know what a thumbnail is, it's just a little um, still picture you see to advertise the video. So. Okay. And I just take it right off the film. Just oh, and if you live in Vermont or New Hampshire, don't worry about this, no. It'll end by June. <laughs>